Hello and welcome to this video tutorial for adjusting the VRS DirectForce Pro pedals. My name is David Williams and in this video I'll be showing you the multitude of ways in which these pedals can be configured to your driving preferences. We'll be looking at pedal face positioning and angle adjustments, force curves, stiffnesses and more. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to set is the overall rake angle of the entire pedal and this will be the same for all three pedals. So you'll want to adjust these two standoffs in the base, which attach the feet first. You'll need two 5mm Allen keys to do this. Now if you find that one side loosens while the other just turns the whole standoff, then you might need to re-tighten one side and then undo the other side first. So it can be a bit fiddly, but it's definitely doable. And then of course you can set the angle. This is maximum angle down and this is maximum angle up. And you could do this for all three pedals. Remember to re-tighten, again two Allen keys at the same time. And you're done. Next up we're going to look at the height and angle of the pedal face. So this time you'll need two 4mm Allen keys and it's going to be these two standoffs within these slots. So same thing again, just loosen them off at the same time. Now you should find that the pedal should be able to slide in and out and the tilt should be uh, adjustable but you may have difficulties getting the pedal to go up and down. If you do, you may need to undo the standoff just above and just below the smaller standoff. So these are M6 and require 5mm Allen keys. And so you can see at the top this is the maximum height and this is the minimum height and you've got everything in between. This is the range of angle adjustment. So very, very adjustable pedal faces. When you're happy, just hand tighten, hand tighten them. And then when you want to fully tighten them, you can use your Allen keys once again. Okay, next we're gonna look at overall pedal travel. So currently this is set to maximum pedal travel, but we can easily adjust that by loosening the standoff in the middle, which I've already loosened slightly in advance, and we can shorten the travel quite a lot. This isn't even minimum. And you can see the travel is much shorter. Now if you find when tightening this back up that it wants to slide upwards, then just pull on the pedal and then tighten at the same time. Next up we're going to look at throttle spring preload. So for this you'll need a 10mm spanner. Usually one is enough, but just in case it's not enough, uh, you might need a second one for this nut on the other side. Now we've loosened the nut off at the back and we can increase preload up to this. So this, you may need to take the tension of the spring. So this is now set to maximum preload. Now it's important to note that we have a rodless spring design, which means there's a bit of a curve at the beginning and end of travel. Now the spring is most at risk at maximum travel, especially at maximum preload like this. So just make sure that the load cell is not set too low in the slot or too high to cause too much deformation in the spring at maximum travel. This is okay. 
Now for minimum preload, we'll just repeat the same steps. Loosen off these two lock nuts. And then what we want to do, take the tension of the spring and move this nut all the way up to the lock nut. And then tighten this up. Okay, so minimum preload looks like this. And maximum preload looks like this. Next up then, we'll adjust the height of the load cell, which will have more of an effect on maximum spring force. First up, we want to remove the throttle spring from these holes at the back. Like so. And then take a three millimeter Allen key, loosen off the load cell screws. Don't need to do it very much and then carefully move the entire load cell assembly up and down the slot. Now you may need to provide a bit of slack to the load cell cable in order to make this cause a bit less strain on the load cell. And once you've moved it to the maximum position, like this, be sure to reinsert the spring into the upper hole. If adjusting to the lowest position, again unload the spring and gently and carefully slide the load cell down, making sure that the alignment is in the middle. And then reinsert your spring after retightening the load cell. Just a final note, take care that these washers are not overlapping each other when you retighten the load cell. Next up, we will look at swapping out the blue spring with the red spring. This is just a simple matter of undoing this clevis clip, which undoes upwards and sliding it out of the side. Then lift the spring assembly up, pull it forwards. Careful that the PTFE bushing does not come forwards like it has done for me. Make sure that this is in place and then gradually pull the assembly out from the bottom. Then simply remove the blue spring and replace it with the red one and reverse the process. You may need to preload the spring slightly like this to get the clip back on. Be sure that everything feels tight and correctly aligned. Now, if you wish to alter the force curve of the brake pedal, you will need to adjust the length of this top tie rod. To do this, you'll need a 10 mil spanner together with an 11 mil. The 11 mil will go over the eyelet and the 10 mil undoes the lock nut. Just gently loosen each of them and then feel free to adjust the length of the tie rod. Now this distance from this eyelet to this eyelet should be no more than 48 millimeters. This ensures that at least five millimeters of thread are present in each end. Now a longer top rod will give you a sharper initial force, more of a steep ramp up, whereas a shorter tie rod will give you a bit more progression, so a softer initial feeling so if we adjust to the softest position, which will be the shortest tie rod, we can see the pedal is very soft initially. And if we lengthen the tie rod, 
it's much firmer initially. Now, one of the things to account for when lengthening the tie rod, if you notice, looking at the pedal face, the entire pedal actually moves forward and we have some free play. So with a shorter tie rod, you have less free play. And a longer tie rod, you have more free play. Now this free play here, you can see there's a gap in the spring. We don't want this spring movement. So we need to add some spaces in the rod assembly to take up this, this space and add just a small amount of preload. So again, we're going to unclip the clevis pin and pull our spring assembly out, keeping the plastic in place. Now the important dimension here are the stack of spacers. So to increase preload, we need to have more spacers. To decrease preload, we need to remove spacers. Now we have a selection of 10 mil, five mil, and multiple one mil uh, washers creating this spacer stack. Now let's say we've increased the length of our tie rod, and correspondingly we want more preload on the spacer stack to eliminate any slack or free play. Now to swap out any spaces in the spacer stack, we're gonna need two 10 mil spanners and a single 12 mil to ensure that we can hold on to everything properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this now. Okay, now I've loosened the rod, unscrewing from the clevis fork, and we now need to remove this nut. And for this example, I want two more millimeters of preload in the spacer stack. So what I'm gonna do is remove the three washers and the five mil spacer, and replace with a single 10 mil spacer. Then I'll return the nut, screw that back on loosely, reassemble the clevis fork. And in terms of how far you need to screw the rod in, you want the rod to just about appear inside of the fork. So you don't want to screw the rod in any more than this. Now make sure that everything is hand tightened. Make sure there are no gaps in any of this spacing, no gaps at all, and then tighten everything up fully. Now start from the clevis fork itself and tighten up the nut next to it and then work outwards to the long standoff at the end. Make sure that the 12 mil spanner is securely on the cleavers fork. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now carefully slide the spring assembly back through the pedal into the hole and clip it back onto the load cell connection. Again, you may need to apply a small amount of preload to make it easier to slide the pin in place. Before you retighten your tie rod, just make sure there's no slack in the pedal. This feels good to me. And then retighten the lock nuts. When you're done, make sure that everything feels tight. Everything is in the correct place. There is no movement or slack. And you're good to go. Finally, onto the clutch now. We can adjust overall travel by moving this standoff up and down like we can do with the other two pedals. We can also adjust preload on the clutch spring, which we can remove by taking out the clevis clip this requires a bit of force to overcome the tension on the spring. But we can slide that up and out. And again, we have a spacer stack or a washer stack that we can use to adjust the preload. Putting this back in place then.
Now the clutch pedal also has a small amount of adjustment available to the force curve. To do this, we'll need to remove this standoff temporarily, which will allow access to these screws beneath attaching the load cell to the slot. It's not recommended to move it any lower from the default position, but you may move it slightly up. So first thing we're going to do is remove the standoff. And then we can access the load cell slot. We're going to loosen these screws slightly. And we can slide the load cell slightly up. May need to loosen them slightly more. And retighten. Now, when adjusting these load cells in their slot, always make sure that everything is lined up so that you have a smooth operating pedal. Now you'll notice that as you reposition the load cell in its slot, you can create a small amount of unwanted play in the spring. So we need a bit more preload. What this means is we'll need to remove our spring assembly and add one or maybe two more washers or an additional spacer in replacement of the washers to the preload stack. Always remember that after making any adjustments to your pedals that the spring is correctly seated in the aluminium bushing and that everything is smooth and tight and nothing is loose. Remember to reinsert the standoff. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you for watching and have fun.